Meditation is an attempt to go where you go unconsciously in deep sleep, to go there consciously, touch that ocean of bliss consciously. I'm often asked, what is meditation? Meditation, in more simpler terms, is an attempt to go beyond mind, to discover what lies beyond mind. But it's not as easy as it looks. So that is why it is called meditation practice. Several things have happened. One, we have allowed our mind to become our master, our puppet master. And it was meant to be your servant, but it has become your master. When you were born, you were given a brain through these eyes, through your mind, through your ears, through your touch, through your feel, through what you ate, what you liked, what you disliked, you programmed this brain of yours. And you created a matrix of all of your likes, dislikes, and all the automatic uh, functions of your body, they all combined into it. If you liked something, you, you had, uh, had a pleasure for it. If you did not like something, you had a dislike for it, an aversion for it. All of these things became your programming mechanism and you had what we call mind today and that matrix is your mind. This mind is a programmed thing. I would say 99.99% of the people have given over the reins of their lives to this mind. The mind now decides for them. Well. Let's, let's take for example, certain things are better left to the mind, like breathing. Your breathing is totally under mind's control. Your heartbeat totally under your mind's control. If you were to look at all your bodily functions, they're all under your mind control. All these are good because they should be under their control. Because if I ask somebody to just walk up the steps consciously, as if you're taking every step, not only will they slow down, but they will also have difficulty, they might trip. But left up to the mind and that repetition by which it can do, it can climb up and down the steps with a lot of ease. When you first drove your car, it was a simple process. You, you so enjoyed it. You were excited about every turn. You couldn't believe that you were controlling this. But now when you drive your car, you can sometimes go on for miles and sometimes even go through some lights and never recognize that um, you went through many lights, but you were not there. Somebody was driving, it was your mind. All of these things are okay, but then mind interacts with your ego. Ego is your sense of I, me, mine, ours. Now it starts convoluting things. And now it makes you a servant to the needs of your ego. You, the being, you become a subservient. I'll, I'll put it a different way. You owned a big house. You have a big, big house. You were the master of the house. It was given to you, this beautiful house. And one day you brought in a dog for your protection, for the protection of the house and for your protection. But you went away on holidays. You went away on an extended holidays. And now after many, many years, you're waking up and you have now decided to come home. You come home and you discover that this dog that you left in charge has taken over the whole house. Now that you're home, you want to act as if you're the boss, but this dog doesn't listen to you anymore. This dog is your mind. We have left it without a master, which is you, supposed to be you, for too long. So now this dog goes and does his poo-poo in all the rooms of you, 
creates anxiety, cre creates depression, creates um, um, despair, all of those things, and all to keep you under its control. So today, you have come home and you want this dog to behave. Trust me, this dog will not behave. Meditation is practice to bring this mind under your control, to bring this dog to listen to your commands, to do its job, what it was meant to do. This mind is here for your protection, to protect you, to guard you, to help you navigate this world. But it was never meant to take charge of you. Our absence allowed the mind to take over, allowed the ego to take over. Now it is you who's saying, no, I want my control back. That's meditation. You trying to take your attempt back. Meditation is also an attempt to create wisdom insights within yourself. Human mind as it is, is not capable of creating, having wisdom for one simple reason, is that human mind jumps on surface. It is like skipping stones. It just goes from one surface to the other. It is always just on the top layer of your being. It's just surface hopping. What do I mean by that? Ancient, Ancient people used to call mind a drunk monkey. Why a drunk monkey? Monkey, because it jumps from one branch to another branch, from one tree to another tree. Mind is like that. It cannot stay on one thought for very long and it'll jump. Notice your mind, observe your mind, and you will notice it jumps all over the place from this branch to that branch to that tree to that tree. And now it's drunk because even if it stops on one branch for a little long time, a little while, it is still doing this. It is still just the thoughts are just going around in circles. There is no depth of thought. Wisdom comes from insight. Insight is the ability to look inwards, deeply into subjects into things that are on your mind to the real nature of yourself that's where the wisdom comes and wisdom can only come if you are capable of having deep insights and that is what meditation does for you it allows for your mind to become your tool become a laser-like phenomena not scattered light but a laser-like phenomena that you can bring to bear on any problem, any issue, giving you the ability to use your mind, the intellect, the reason and logic to better your life. This is how mind has to become your servant. It is a wonderful servant, but left to his own devices, it, it can be a horrible master. So what is meditation but an attempt of a human being to come home and be the master of their own house? All animals need to sleep. They all go to sleep. Some birds even sleep while they're flying. They're capable of that. Some are capable of sleeping with one eye open, one eye closed. Every animal, every human being needs to sleep. And the amazing thing is we all also need this deep sleep, not REM sleep, but this deep sleep where even the dreams disappear. We all need to go there. And if we don't get deep sleep, we will go crazy. If you deprive somebody of deep sleep for about three weeks, they will become insane. So what is this? Why do all animals, all life on this planet needs to do this deep sleep? Where do they go? I believe they go to rest 
in the ocean of consciousness. You can put it, if you're religious, you can put it ocean of God. We all go there, we rest, our mind gets rested, our body gets rested. And then we come back and we feel refreshed, ready to take on the world again. Meditation is an attempt to get, go where you go unconsciously in deep sleep. To go there consciously, touch that ocean of bliss consciously. That's what meditation is all about. Under the guidance of somebody who knows meditation, what is meditation but these three things. First part of meditation, and all spiritual exercises and all meditation practice is for you to develop the ability to see your mind an ability to see your mind most people are in their mind they cannot see themselves separate from their mind they're in it they're in it it's like i can't see my hands right now because they're very close i need some distance I need some distance to see these hands. Similarly, the first part of any good meditation practice is to increase this ability of yours to see the mind. Because that which you can see, you become separated from. I'm, I can see those collapsed hands there. I can see that moss there. I'm separate from it. I can see this stable. I'm separate from it. If you cannot see separation, then you are in your mind. So the first part is for you to see the mind. And then all the drama of mind starts becoming apparent. How it makes you dance how it contorts you and distorts you, and how it is basically your puppet master. It is your puppet master, and you realize how your mind has been making you dance. All his life, you have been dancing to the tune of your mind, to the tune of your ego. Once there is some daylight between yourself and your mind, under the guidance of a good teacher, the second aspect of meditation must come into play. And now it is molding the mind. This, now you see it, but now how do I mold it for it to become my servant? How do I not allow it to make me dance? How do I understand this thing and start making it an instrument at my controls, at the controls of my being. Because eventually the mind has to become instruments of your redemption, of your freedom. That's what mind has to become. So molding the mind becomes a process. And that requires another set of practices. After that has happened, then there's the last aspect that has to be taken into account. Now this mind, which you have molded into an instrument at your disposal, now the last part comes in, is for you to have freedom from the mind. All subtle aspects of mind must be taken out of you so that you may see yourself in original luminosity, in your original form, in your face, your face that you had before you were born. I say face, but it is beyond face. It is so that you may know your most serene, most subtle, most, uh, most sublime form of who you are that which you truly, truly are, that which in you is having this human body experience, 
that which in you got lost in this world and now is rediscovering itself. That's what meditation is to come home to your womb nature, to your original face, that which was way before you were born, that which you were before this existence came into existence. I wish you good journey. I wish you good journey in meditation.